know, it's funny. Um, I had to pull out the Jeep because uh, it was sitting a little bit too long. So I figured, yeah, Sunday, nice, quiet day. I'll give it a drive on a Sunday. Um, I may have to get gas later. So um, no big deal there. Um, in fact, let me uh, throw on my adaptive cruise control so this way I can just cruise speed. Uh, so push set and there. Yeah, two button operation and now I have adaptive cruise control on. Yeah, you may notice that the uh, check engine light is on. I think it'll probably go off by itself. The problem is I haven't driven this car in so long. So um, I guess I would be the perfect example of someone who owns a, a, a Mopar Hemi SRT product who decided to make the switch to electric. And let me be perfectly honest, just looking at that fucking check engine light right there reminds me of the reason why I'm, I'm preferring electric and why I'm loving electric so much. These cars are like race cars built for street use. That's why they call them street racing technology. The problem, however, is that you have to constantly baby these cars and you constantly have to maintain these cars. Like anybody who tells you that these things are reliable, they're fucking lying to you. That's the bottom line. If they are reliable, it's because they themselves have put so much extra work and extra care and extra attention into them that they remain reliable. Now, me personally, that check engine light, it could be anything. That could be an O2 sensor or it could simply be the fact that um, I haven't driven the car in a while so maybe my battery is low or something and it probably is going to go away by itself. So I think after a nice give it a long drive i think the uh, light will go away by itself so what i will do is i will be sure to video when the light goes away by itself because this car as you remember it was only a couple of months ago i had this car's engine basically fully rebuilt and um they put uh better parts in than were oem because some of the parts that were oem they weren't able to get so i got this motherfucker behind me with the stupid ford expedition and he's trying to race around me but guess what I'm chilling. You race around me with that shitty twin turbo EcoBoost garbage engine. I got a V8, bitch. SRT life, motherfucker. So you know what? Anyway, okay. All right. No, I, 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 got, I don't know. I, 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 I hadn't had my coffee, so that you know, I got a problem right now. But anyway, I'm not trying to race nobody. You want to race around me? You have fun. I'm in the middle lane. You stay in the fucking left. And when you get a chance, you pass somebody. I, I'm not doing it. I'm not trying to race nobody. I'm trying to enjoy my Sunday morning. And I'm trying to enjoy my car. This motherfucker racing around me and shit. Like he's somebody. You got a fucking EcoBoost engine and you've, you're driving a bus. Your Ford Expedition is slow. The only reason I'm not ahead of you is because I don't want to be. I'm just enjoying my adaptive cruise control. I'm right here behind the next generation Jeep. And let me just say this, as far as the new generation of Mopar products, I am extremely disappointed. Now, on the bright side, this new Jeep that they built, it is more refined, absolutely. The interior is definitely better. It's definitely more refined, but they've gutted it. They've made it with, look at this, this is the four by E. So for all these people talking about hating electric cars and all that, that's exactly what this fucking thing is. This is a hybrid. This is not even, this is not a Hemi. I got the 6.4. This guy's got a fucking 4 by e But the bottom line is, it, it looks okay, but I'm going to be disappointed when the Grand Cherokee name goes away because somebody claimed that it was racist towards Indian people. I don't really believe it's racist towards Indian people. But somebody said it was. And, and and just somebody saying something is enough for you to have political change. I don't know what that's about. But um, bottom line is, I'm not really happy with these new cars. I know nobody's happy. First of all, I know nobody's happy with the uh, new Jeep Grand Cherokee. You can't get an SRT engine in it. You can't get a 6.4. Um, they're making it so you can't get a 5.7 either over time. And on top of that, they're about to change the name. It's not going to be called Grand Cherokee no more. It's going to be called... Wagoneer. I, I gave up on them when they gave up on me. You see how my steering wheel says SRT? If you buy one of them shitty ass scat packs, you don't even get the steering wheel that says SRT. You got to go all the way up to a Hellcat 
or you gotta buy a demon. Like that's just that's stupid. That's just stupid. It's like I don't I don't know how they bait and switch these people into buying this stuff, but uh, I'm not going for it. When you like I had my Chrysler 300 SRT. It said SRT on the freaking wheel. It said SRT on my wheels, the the OEM wheels. It said SRT all over it. Then they took that away. They made a stupid track hawk. It's like, what are y'all doing? But uh, I'm done. I'm I'm no longer emotionally invested in that product. It's over. It's done. So this low gas mileage ass bullshit. What is this? Ten point two miles per gallon on premium unleaded. I'm done. I'm done. I'm no longer invested. You know what? That guy with that uh, Ford uh, Expedition, he uh, disrespected. We're going to catch his ass. We're going to catch his ass. We're going to catch his ass. We're going to catch that ass. He's right there. Contact. Uh-oh. Wait, I just put this thing in manual mode. I got to take it out of there. Yeah, we're going to catch that booty. We got you, boy. We got you. We going to run, boy. Run, Forrest, run. Run, Forrest. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> now I understand why people want this thing so badly. But you ain't getting one because they don't make them no more. How about that? Run, Forrest, run. Run, Forrest. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> and look at this guy. This guy has that. I remember. You know what I hate? You remember when they made that stupid track hawk? I had people emailing me seeing that track hawk symbol, but they didn't realize that wasn't a track hawk, that was a trail hawk. You see the symbol on this thing? That's a trail hawk. And it was at that point I was like, wait a minute, what are y'all doing? Y'all are making these things, they look alike. You didn't give this the Hellcat hood. And the back of it has trail hawk, and everybody thinks that that I have and I'm like, yo, that's not, uh-oh, 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 the bus is trying to catch up. Where you going? 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 Your wife is covering her face because she knows I'm recording. Your wife is covering her face. Where you going, boy? Run, Forrest! <laughs> God damn, I love this fucking car. See, when I paid this car off, there was no way I could sell this car. I couldn't sell it. I, I could have traded this car in. And I could have gotten my Cadillac Lyric with even more off of the sticker. There was no way I was going to trade this car. Hell no. You know why? Because this car is fucking fantastic. I have to say, of all of the Mopar products that I ever bought, that you saw all my videos for, this was the best one. This was absolutely the best fucking one. That's why I kept it. Everything else I sold. Sold off that Chrysler 300 SRT. Look at this guy. Oh, it's two women. Yeah, that's right, baby. You stay back there, Keisha. You behind the SRT now. Oh, one of your lights is out, Keisha. You gotta get that fixed, Keisha. You gotta get that thing fixed, Keisha, because you can't be driving around with like one headlight. That's dangerous. But um, yeah, man, I couldn't sell this fucking car. This car's got 90,172 miles on it. There was no way I could sell this car. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. If I really wanted to, I could pour money into this motherfucker and make this a goddamn race truck. But I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it because I'm enjoying my nice electric Cadillac. I'm enjoying my Cadillac. The only reason I'm driving this today is because if I don't drive it, the battery's going to die and the uh, brake calipers are going to rust over real bad. So, um, yeah, that's I had. To, I have to take this car out at least once a week. I got. I, I got it. No, you know what? This car can sit for like 30 days, but I got to take this car out at least maybe um, every other week. Yeah, I got to do it every other week. It's so hard to do it, though. It's like, I mean, you know, this car is awesome, but every time you fucking drive this thing, you got to drive to a gas station <laughs> because the way, see, that's the problem. What these people don't understand about these stupid twin turbo shit engines is the faster you drive, the more boost you need. Eventually, you're getting worse mile per gallon than a damn Hemi eventually you know so the reality oh I'm, I'm gonna let him catch up because i'm about to get off look at this guy look at this guy we missed a ford expedition my uncle got that truck that car is a bus and it's slow i'll pull i'll pull train lengths on you you bus and you know what's funny the new dodge charger ev weighs more than that ford expedition it weighs more than that ford expedition you believe that shit 
You believe that? That's crazy. And you wonder why you got to have 15.5 inch and 16.1 inch Brembo's on these things. Yeah, because these things, these new cars, are gonna, that, that new Dodge Charger and Challenger, uh, Charger, four door, whatever, that cheap, lazy shit, that thing weighs more than this Jeep. This Jeep weighs 5,200 pounds. That Charger EV weighs 6,000 pounds. That's that's obscene. That's absolutely obscene. That, that's beyond obscene. That's absolutely obscene. We are now in Queens. That's obscene. 6,000. That new Charger weighs more than the Dodge Durango Hellcat. That's obscene. And they want, oh yeah, well, it's only going up to 133 miles an hour. I've been up to 155 in this truck with uh, the New Jersey Turnpike and the Pennsylvania. I was going to Pennsylvania on the I-80. I've easily passed. Anybody who has one of these things knows. 133 miles per hour, you must be kidding. That's ridiculous. That's sad. It's obscene. It's absolutely obscene. Obscene. Now, I haven't been back here in a long time. This gas station... I haven't been to the gas station in the whole month of February. I haven't been to the gas station in so long. Like I don't even I don't even know what gas costs, honestly. So basically, in driving this car and you know trying to recharge the battery and everything, basically I got to go to the gas station to get a little bit of fuel because I'm pretty low on fuel, as you can see. So just put a couple you know gallons in there. Nothing too major. Probably about twenty dollars. But honestly, I have no idea what fuel costs. Uh, this purple plum charger scat pack, right? Uh, I hate saying that word. I hate that. I should be able to say charger SRT. They've ru they have so ruined the brand. It it's just disgusting. Look at this. Look at this fucking line. Look at this shit. So it says gas is two ninety five for regular. So that means that uh, premium is probably much higher because the last time I was here. There was like a dollar spread between premium and regular. And this is, of course, like the middle of the day. So everybody's here right now. They're shopping. They're doing their BJ shopping. Um, yeah, yeah. Try not to hit each other, you idiots. I don't even know if you're supposed to be there in that stupid-ass Nissan. But uh, you and him can work this shit out. Yeah. What are y'all? What are y'all? What are y'all you playing chicken? You idiots playing chicken? You guys are morons. Yeah, look at this guy. I got, uh, what is it? Larry David right here. Larry David said, fuck this. And uh, I can't see this other driver. Larry David says, I'm not having it today. Yeah, I, I don't even know if this person's supposed to be. Well, actually, I don't know. Actually, I don't know who's in the wrong. Okay, so these people are going to, they're going to have it out right now. They're like, I got this person right here. He's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not moving. I got Larry David right here. He's not moving. This person got a dent in the trunk. Uh oh, we got Keisha here. Keisha's not moving. So we got the two worst people in the world. We got Larry David, and then we got uh, Keisha up in the car. So neither one of them are leaving. God knows how long. I might be able to get gas on this long-ass line and come back and Keisha. And okay, it looks like Keisha has given up. Keisha is in reverse. It looks like Keisha's given up for Larry David. You see that? This is the reason why you'll never get anywhere as a people. It's because you're too quick to surrender. Me, it would have been fucking war. I would have stood right there, Desert Eagle cocked, waiting for Larry David to say something. But uh, this is why you'll never get anywhere as a... Oh, oh, she stuck up the middle finger. Keisha is not having it. Keisha stuck up the middle finger. Keisha stuck up the middle finger. This is why you will never get anywhere as a people. You give up too easily. I wouldn't have, if it was me, I would have still been sitting right there, Desert Eagle loaded, waiting, just waiting. I'd be like, nah, I ain't, I ain't moving. But uh, fortunately, it wasn't me, you know? It's just, sad. it's just disgusting. Look at this shit. Now, this is what happens. We got this Biden presidency. You got this Jerome Powell Federal Reserve. It says regular unleaded is 295 and it says premium is 367. <sighs> now, let me tell you something. We are ri right now. What is this? March. Shit, what is this? 
Today is March, uh, daylight savings time. Today is March 10th. So, um, guess what? Um, we're coming out of uh, winter in about, what, a week and a half? Uh, March 23rd is the first day of spring. So, we're about to hit spring. And gas is, th what is that, 369? So, guess what? Gas is going up. I hope y'all are ready. Gas going up. But I'm not going to have to worry about it. See, I'm just here putting gas in this thing as if it was like a lawnmower and I just needed a little bit of gas in it. Y'all lining up for this shit. And you know what's another thing? Considering how long I got to wait just to be online to get some damn gas, I find it so funny that people are like indignant about how long they have to wait to charge an EV. Look at this guy. He's got the G-Wagon. He's got these dirty ass shoes on. Look at this. Look at this guy's heels. He's got the G-Wagon and, and his heels are ashy as hell. Look at that. Amazing. Amazing. You, you come out the house like that, you should have socks on, bro. It's like, what about foot and mouth disease, man? You got a G-Wagon. That's an older G-Wagon right there. And he got the ashy ass feet. It's amazing. It's just amazing. So, anyway. Y'all are going to have to deal with this gas situation every single day. I am not. I can charge at home. I can charge at the charging station. While my car is charging, I always go. I do some grocery shopping. I go get uh, some lunch or some dinner, whatever time of the day it is. And that's it. And y'all y'all act indignant. Because, oh yeah, well I can, re I can get gas in three minutes. Well, this doesn't look like three minutes. It looks a little bit more like 15 it's disgusting. Look at this shit. And you see this Cadillac XT4? The XT4, the XT5, and the XT6 are doing pretty well compared to the Lyric. And it really does make sense. It's like, you know, some of these retirees, this is all they really need. They just need a small car that just gets them from point A to point B and looks wealthy. You know, it doesn't have to look rich. It just has to look wealthy. See, it's sad because that G-Wagon looks wealthy, but those ankles look... Um, plebeian, but um, that's that's just what it is. That's just what it is. So um, y'all gotta wait on these damn gas lines for this Biden gas, this Biden economics. What is it, Bidenomics? Y'all gotta wait for this Bidenomics gasoline, and y'all are being charged top dollar to get this Bidenomics gasoline. It's just, it's so sad. Now the thing that I hate about these turbocharged engines. Let me keep going about turbocharged engines. This lady has to put premium unleaded in that Cadillac XT4. You have to put premium unleaded in that car to ensure that there's no misfires. You know, because the thing about it is turbocharged engines, they pull in more boost and they use more fuel. So in doing so, they require higher octane fuel in order to ensure that all of the fuel is burned as efficiently as possible. You know, so um, she's just taking her sweet time. Uh oh, look! Uh oh, somebody went to the uh, nail salon and got that pedicure. She's gonna be on OnlyFans later, paying for that XT4. <laughs> oh yeah, feet photos! I've got feet photos. I can put plenty of feet photos up. Cougar feet. I mean, what, what have we come to as a society? It's like, you're using foot photos to pay for your Mercedes and stuff. It's like, what have we come to? What have we come to? I got Amanda Waller here with the Toyota Corolla. She's about to fight the Justice League. She got to get some gas. And uh, I got Ethel right here. Let me see. She's going to use that premium unleaded. Unless she's cheap. She might try to use that regular unleaded. Let's see what she does. Oh, she used regular unleaded. Oh, my God. Oh my God, you're gonna blow that engine out before that thing sees uh, 80,000 miles. Oh my God, Ethel, Jesus Christ. You're supposed to be using premium. That is a turbocharged four cylinder. You're supposed to be using premium. Oh my God. These cheap, these cheap skins. See, this is why you never buy a used car, because you never know how much these people have abused these vehicles. People, some of these people abuse these vehicles. That's abuse. 
You know, I, I saw one of these uh, YouTubers, I'm not going to name names, who was talking about how you could just use regular unleaded in one of these SRT cars. And it was funny because everybody snapped back. They were like, no, the hell you can't. You'll blow these fucking engines, man. You'll, you'll damage this shit. It's like there's just certain things you ain't supposed to do. It's like if you're going to buy a premium car, you got to use premium fuel. It is what it is. It's like you can't use you can't use regular unleaded. Look at this lady. Oh my god, she's using that eighty seven. Oh my god, you're gonna go into the Cadillac dealership. You pulling out Cadillacs and you're putting regular unleaded in there. Like who did? Didn't you get some home training? Nobody trained you. Oh my god, you can't do that. You go blow that engine out. Mm mm mm. So just going to the gas station with me is an adventure. The Chevy Equinox. I can't believe it. You buy you buy a damn luxury car and you put in freaking regular unleaded in it. So, yeah, Amanda Waller is about done. So she's going to go beat up the Justice League. She's going to put some chips in their necks and, and threaten them. She's going to go get the Suicide Squad, blow their heads off, go fight the Justice League. Let's go. Yeah, I don't need that much. I, I think I about $20 should be enough. I ain't gonna, in fact, I, I, shit, $10 could be enough because I'm not driving this thing. I'm only driving it just enough to put some charge into this battery. And my battery, my battery signal came on. I'll just let you see that shit. My battery signal and my check engine light came on. Now, the last time I drove the car, which was a while ago, everything was fine. The battery light I know is going to go off because the battery um, has to charge before it will, you know, be regular. Who the fuck is blowing like that? But anyway, yeah, the battery has to charge a little bit, so I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a worry. Oh yeah, fuel door. All right. Okay, so we got this guy right here. He's got his Mazda. He's got his white seats and his white interior. Everybody likes that white interior. Oh, look over there. We got the Track Hawk. That's the Track Hawk. That stupid Track Hawk. That should have been an SRT Jeep Hellcat. That's what they should have called it. But right now it's called a Track Hawk. I don't know what they were thinking so yeah here we go what is this 20 gallons is going to cost me a little over five dollars all right there we go all right uh, 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 uh. there we go yeah that's all i need because the next time i drive this thing will probably be like april because i have to go and i have to uh get my uh, inspection sticker so it'll be a while it'll be a little while Yeah, I'm almost afraid to go through the, the parking lot because uh, these people are crazy. It's like these people are, like trying to fight each other to drive through the parking lot and everything. It's just sad. Some of these some of these people are like lunatics. Got Larry David and Keisha fighting each other and shit. Yeah, twenty dollars is enough. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not doing any serious driving in this thing anytime soon. I just want. I just want to have just enough gas in there to keep the gasoline hoses fresh. Make that uh, fuel pump do its job a little. See, that's the downside. When you, it's like you got multiple cars. Like I got family members who have like four and five and six and seven. I have one family member who got like ten. Or 13 cars. It's like some stupid number. And I'm like... It's like, how do you keep track of all that shit? It's like, it's hard enough for me to just keep track of... Of just two. It's like, you you keep... You got like 13 fucking cars. This shit is ridiculous. You know? It's like, you get... He's, he's got all types of support equipment. Battery tenders. Tire inflate. Like, he's got everything. <laughs> you have to. Because you're, you're basically, at that point, you're damn near a car dealership.
okay, you know what? I can get through this light if you'll move faster. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's that. All right. I don't know which way the... Uh... Well, that guy's got the 2017-18. See, the thing about it is it, it really doesn't matter, like, which year of these Jeep SRTs you got. You No matter what, you basically still have the exact same engine. But on top of that, you're going to have to do your maintenance at about the exact same time. So it's like it almost doesn't even matter which one you have. You're going to have to do your HVAC repairs. You're going to have to do your all-wheel drive transfer case system somewhere around 60 miles, 60,000 miles. And you're going to have to get engine servicing and stuff done with your engine around 100,000 miles. That's why, personally, I wouldn't buy any of these damn cars used. There's no way in hell. No way in hell. Like, there's some people, oh, yeah, well, I refuse to buy the new Dodge EV, man. I'll buy a used Hellcat. I'll buy a used Skepi. It's like, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. And it's sad because some of these dudes, they have shit credit. And they have barely enough money to put fuel in these fucking things. Let me see. Let me get in front of this chicken because you're driving too fucking slow. So, anyway. Yeah, some of y'all got barely enough money to put in a gas tank. Your insurance is going to be high as fuck. And then on top of that, now you've got to make, you know, extremely expensive repairs to the brakes. Or you got to make extremely expensive repairs to certain parts of the car. You better make sure you get that Mopar Max Care warranty. Because if you don't, oh boy, you're in for a world to hurt. Your wallet's in for a world to hurt. See, one thing I got to appreciate about leasing these cars uh, is that when you lease these cars... If you get like a three-year lease on one of these high-tech cars, when shit starts to break, you're coming out of it, basically. So, um, it's like even me. If if anything goes wrong, I ain't got to worry about it. That's the dealer's problem, not mine. <laughs> and I can move on to something else. Because you never know. I mean, the thing about it is I, I don't want it. And I, I, I don't know what will be out in three years from now. But the mere fact that my car will go back in three years means I can get something else. Like, I get, Mercedes might have something new. Cadillac is going to have something new. Uh, obviously, the Dodge Banshee is coming, but I'm, I'm, I honestly, I'm not, I'm, I'm not excited for it, nor am I impressed with what I've seen thus far, but I'll try to withhold final judgment until I actually drive it. But uh, the reality is, uh, there's going to be a lot of options. A lot of options. Let's see. Okay, good. Nobody there. There's going to be a lot of options. Options are good. Yeah, it's good to have options. It's going to be all types of stuff. Three, year, three years from now, there's going to be all types of stuff. Because it's crazy. Most of the shit that they keep talking about on the internet and the news is stuff that we've been promised for like the last four or five years, but it hasn't hit market yet. I mean, there's people who put down... Uh, what are those things? Uh, 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 what are those things? Um, uh... De um, deposits on the Blazer, the Silverado, they put down deposits on this stuff and they still haven't gotten those cars because either there were stop sales or they were having problems programming them. So, uh, oh, look, that Charger Hellcat the red eye is still there. Look at that. They still got that red eye. They can't sell that fucking thing. Who's, who's coming there to buy that shit? And they see it. It's right there. It's out in the front. Thousands, hundreds, millions of people pass through it every single week. They seen it. Nobody wanted. I put it in a couple of videos. Nobody's interested. And that's a red eye charger. So what? It's a used red eye. Nobody trying to buy that damn thing. I'm looking at these BMW lots. Look at the. They got all these trade in Volvos. Trade all these cars are off lease basically. All these trade in MLs, GLCs, GLEs. That's the BMW used lot. It's like they got all them shitty X3s and boring ass X5s. <laughs> What's ironic is the one thing that they don't have a lot of in their inventory is electric vehicles. The iX is selling. The i7 was selling. The, um, what is it called? Um, the i4 and the i5 were selling. That's, it's ironic that the one thing that they actually don't have a lot of in their inventory is the uh, is the uh, i series. I don't know who started some shit, but them cops gonna kick their ass. 
I can only hope. Look at this, look at this. Ooh, Plum Charger. A Plum Challenger Hellcat. Plum Crazy. Oh yeah, that thing's nice. Okay, so here we are, yet another traffic morning. Oh, wonderful, yay, traffic morning. So, um, I consider these my traffic rants because it's really easy to rant while you're sitting in traffic. You got nothing else to do. In fact, to tell you the truth, ranting actually helps uh, the time pass quicker. Like, for instance, like right now, we're behind this expedition, right? So all I'm going to do is just say, you know what? I don't even feel like driving no more, so I'm just going to hit that button right there. Boom! Hey, guess what? You can drive yourself. I ain't got time for this shit. So let me just change my speed to, let's say, uh, 60 miles per hour tops. And I'm going to let the car just do its thing. So let me just change the speed to 60. There you go. Okay, so there we are. Well, <clears throat> I, was, I was watching... Um, a couple of YouTubers, because, you know, I think it's so funny. Some of these YouTubers, especially the ones who don't own electric vehicles, don't have electric cars, never probably even driven one. It was like, as soon as the Dodge uh, six pack and the Dodge EV were announced, it was like they were trying to be nice and they were trying to um, they were trying to uh, give it the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, that's a good thing because technically you should really withhold all judgment until the final product is actually released. The only problem is the information that has been released, they already pretty much know it spells disaster for the brand or for at least what they believe the brand should be. And the thing that I'm thinking about it is, what did you think was going to happen? First of all, when that Elephant engine came out, I was like, oh, you know what? Oh, I wonder is Dodge going to put that in all of its cars or is Chrysler going to put that in the 300? Or I, I really, really believed that they were going to take that engine and they were going to just put it in everything because that was the most logical thing to do. So I, I always say again, you know, I used to have to argue with these stupid idiots online about the Dodge Magnum. Oh, well, the Dodge Magnum didn't sell. Well, the Dodge Magnum existed in a time before crossovers took over. And the thing about it is they never gave it a fair chance. When the Dodge Magnum existed, you only really had a 6.1 Hemi, a 2.7 liter V6, and a 3.5 liter V6. And at that time, the 3.5 and the 2.7, those engines really weren't that good. It wasn't until they made that Pentastar engine. Um, I believe that was right around, after, it was post-bailout, like right after the bailout era. That was like uh, about 2010, 2011. When they made that Pentastar engine, everything pretty much got it. The Chrysler 300, the Dodge uh, Charger of that time, and um, the Challenger got it. And the thing about it is, that was a really good engine. A naturally aspirated V6. It's just like with GM. GM's been using that same naturally aspirated V6 and everything from my mama's car. She had the Cadillac SRX, the Cadillac STS, the Cadillac, uh, what was it? The um, XT5 right now. That's the current model. Uh, they've been using that engine and everything. And there's a simple reason. That engine is a pretty good engine. The one problem my mom had was her camshaft needed a module and the check engine light came on the car didn't break down but the check engine light came on she took it into Cadillac they looked at it, they said oh yeah you need a module they put that thing in there took her that you know they they lent her a loaner car and it took her like almost no time to get the car fixed maybe a day which you, you know nowadays you could pretty much expect that it takes a day or two to fix your car so if you give it to them on Friday you don't get it back to like Monday or something but um long story short that Pentastar engine, I would argue, saved Jeep, Dodge, Ram, Chrysler. Because they've basically put that freaking engine in every... They've even put that engine in Jeep Grand Cherokees, you know? I, I really would argue that that Pentastar V6 really saved them. Unlike the 2.7, a lot of people hated the 2.7 because they said it burned oil and it used oil too quick. Um, I had a 2.7 liter Chrysler 300 at one point in the very, like, in the very beginning. And then I also bought the uh, SRT 300 2006. So um, 
I would argue that that engine literally saved that company because you were here. You are you were able to put that engine in everything. They put it in the new Chrysler 200. They put it in, um, you know, pretty much all the Jeeps. I think the only thing they really couldn't put it in was the Rams because the Rams are you know heavy duty trucks, so they needed the V8. But they had the 5.7. They didn't really need the 6.4. They the 5.7 was adequate enough. So uh, long story short. Uh, both GM and Chrysler were doing really well with those engines. Now, Ford said, oh, yeah, well, we're going to make EcoBoost engines and we're going to put twin turbos on the V6. Now, I, you'd have to look at their data to see how, how should I say, profitable and how reliable those cars really were because I've never actually seen that data. I've, like, most companies ain't going to tell you how profitable they are. But um, what I can say is, you know, I had an uncle who had a Lincoln MKS EcoBoost. In fact, he had the first one, and then he had the refresh of it. It was an okay car, but I hated driving twin turbos. I never liked that twin turbo lag, and I also never liked the hair trigger throttle feeling of the car. I never liked it. So, <clears throat> bottom line, um, I was watching, I think, a YouTuber, Uncle Tony's Garage. He was complaining... He was like, yeah, uh, Tim Kaniskas said, yeah, the turbos feel like they're always spooled. And he was complaining that, yeah, they are always spooled because they have to be in order to produce enough power to make something that heavy run. You see, the mistake that they've made is they've made smaller engines do more work. So it's like you get these crossovers that have freaking force. It. No, I don't really want you to go to the next lane. Well, okay, you know what? I'm going to let the car go to the next lane. The car said it doesn't want to stay behind that guy, so I'm just going to let it. You know, it does what it wants. But anyway, um, uh, what was I saying? Um, they've made these little small engines. Oh, shit, the motherfucker wants to go back. You see, that this is, you know, it's like when I was uh, younger and I was learning to drive, and any time I couldn't get past who was immediately in front of me, it was like, yeah, you know, like uh, the people were teaching me to drive, they'd be like, yeah, you got to be patient, shit. Well, the, the computer is absolutely not patient. It's like, yo, I just want to get around this guy because he's not going fast enough. But, um... What was I saying? Um, yeah, they've made these little small four-cylinder engines do so much work. Because first of all, you got to remember, the average car has grown in size. Like when you look at like the Ford Taurus, you see this Ford Taurus? That's a Ford Taurus right there. It's an old-ass Ford Taurus. And if you look at the new Ford Taurus, the new Ford Taurus was built on the same platform as my uncle's Lincoln EcoBoost uh, MKS. And the thing about it is that car is gigantic. That car weighed as much as my Chrysler 300 did. So the issue ultimately is, if you're going to take a, a, a small car, you're going to grow the car, then you got to put an adequate sized engine in there. Now, for a car that size, the only engine that's adequate is a V6. And, you know, we don't have problems with elevation and air pressure and everything. So you don't really need the turbochargers. The turbochargers are going to do more damage in the long run because for the most part, that's another part that has to be fixed. So that means it's going to cost you more to have to do uh, maintenance and repair on those things. So you're better off with a naturally in aspirated engine. You have, you have fewer parts, and as long as the engine is appropriately sized, you don't really have to worry. So when I'm thinking about all these, these Honda CRVs and these Toyota RAV4s and even things just like this, this it's, most of these cars got little four-cylinder little bullshit-ass engines. And then they wonder, why is their reliability so low? They're trying to squeeze all of this power out of little-ass engines. You know, and that's part of the reason why they had so much problem with those nine-speed transmissions. Because what would happen is, when you have a little-ass engine putting out a little-ass little bit of power, the problem is the transmission has to jump all the way to the eighth and the ninth gear in order to squeeze as much power out of that piece of shit as you can. Now... With the eight speeds that are in these uh, V8 Hemi cars, you never had that problem. In fact, the V8 Hemi feels almost just as fast as one of those uh, uh, SRT products. And then the SRTs, if you close your eyes, you could almost say it felt almost as fast as one of those Hellcats, even though you don't get all that supercharger noise. And um, that, it, it is what it is, you know. But um, my bottom line is people are angry. Okay, yeah, the car wants me to take control. Okay, because it thinks I'm in an exit lane right now, so I just take control temporarily, and then uh, I'll let it finish driving after we get through that bridge. But um, what was I saying? Um, 
Yeah, you never had this problem out of the big V8s because those things created so much power that, you know, they could live in the second, third, and fourth gear. They didn't have to go to the eighth gear unless you're on the highway, you know. And then they, you know, the engine slows down a little bit and revs, and it allows you to coast. Uh, and then they also had that cylinder deactivation in most of the cars in order to turn off the cylinders while you're coasting so you could try to save a little bit of fuel. But the reality was you weren't saving no fuel. My Jeep SRT for the life of that car has gotten like 11 miles to a gallon. And part of the problem is because the car makes you wanna speed. The car makes you wanna drive fast. And that's one of the things that they're gonna find out with these turbo engines. These turbocharged V6s in these heavy ass cars, they require more boost. And more boost means that they gotta use more air to mix with that fuel which means that you need more fuel to mix with the air, which means that you need more air to mix with more fuel. And it's a vicious cycle, and what it amounts to is lower fuel efficiency. The more boost you use, the lower your miles per gallon are going to be. And that's just a reality. you know. So um, I think a lot of them are going to be disappointed by the sound of that thing because the twin turbo engines, they sound terrible. And then also, anybody who has a Hellcat is going to be disappointed because this is an obvious downgrade. Those Hellcats are capable of 200 miles per hour. Now, granted, there's almost no place you can drive that way unless you're being chased by the police and you're running. But uh, those Hellcats are capable of 200 miles per hour. Them V6 uh, shit packs or six packs, whatever the fuck they call them, those little things are not capable of anything near that, for one. And then on top of that, um, they don't sound good. Like, a Hellcat, you don't have to drive it fast. You just drive, you can drive that shit at regular, like 30, 40 miles an hour, and it sounds incredible. It sounds awesome. You know, that was the one thing about that car that I actually liked because everything else about it I really didn't like. I never really wanted a Dodge product. I wanted a Chrysler 300 Hellcat. That's what I wanted. So, to tell you the truth, I'm a bit jaded. Anyway, look at this guy. Hey, you're breaking the law. You're over in the shoulder. You're breaking the law. Man, that guy's lucky I'm not a cop. Okay, so anyway, as I was saying, um, I'm a bit jaded because once I realized Chrysler wasn't going to give us the 300 SRT anymore, and then I realized they weren't going to give me the Hellcat 300, I said, fuck Chrysler. I was like, yo, I'm done. I'm, I, I literally said to everybody on my channel, heard me say it. I was like, yo, I'm done. I'm gone. I said, I will take my money to Mercedes. I will take my money to Cadillac. I'm done. As soon as I realized that, because I saw this coming. I saw this coming. You know, you got to remember, I owned a number of these SRT cars. And once you get addicted to that or once you get used to that, you expect them to do more. You know, they went from 425 horsepower to 475. And then they went to 485. And then they went to uh, 707. And then they went to 797. And then they went to 830. And then they went to 1,000. So, nah, it's like, you're not going to bait and switch me. I told you what I wanted, and you refused to build it. You know what they say, if you build it, they will come? Well, you didn't build it, so I'm not coming. It's just that even fucking Kia is building goddamn race cars. Even Kia. I think, what does that thing have? I think this car... I think that car, if I'm not, I, I drove that car a long time ago. I remember the Hyundai Genesis R-Spec had a V8, and they were putting that up against the Chrysler 300. I can't remember what the Stinger has. And I drove that car. It's all-wheel drive, but I can't remember what the engine in that car is because I haven't really looked it up. I drove that car as soon as it came out. But you got even fucking keys building goddamn light fucking race cars. That key is faster at the top speed than a, than a Dodge Charger EV. What are you going to tell me? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's over. So when I realized that they weren't going to build it, I was like, yo, I'm done. I said, I'm done. That's it. I said, I'm done. So this is the bottom line. Chances are you're stuck in a ninja loan in that brand new Charger Scat Pack or that brand new Charger Hellcat or whatever. I got to ask this guy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. What kind of engine is in a Stinger? Is that a V6 or a V8? That's a V6. Is it turbo? Yeah, twin. 
Oh, it's a twin turbo V6. Oh, okay. Do they make a V8? Oh, they don't. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just had I just had to ask. I just had to ask him. But um, what was I saying? Um, what was I saying? Um, I was saying something. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, uh, I remember Hyundai Genesis R spec had the uh, V8 engine. Oh, look at this guy. This guy's got the scat pack. So here's the thing. This is what it is. Y'all are stuck in them ninja loans in these scat packs. Y'all are stuck in them loans. Some of y'all are paying 20% interest every month. Y'all are stuck in those loans. And the sad thing is now your cars are old. They're played out. And uh, y'all are upset that if you try to upgrade you won't be able to get something better than what you got. And the sad thing is, I, I, I did a, uh, what was it, a survey? And uh, in my survey, I asked, which would you rather have? Would you rather have a 550 horsepower V6 twin turbo? Or would you rather have a uh, 485 horsepower V8? Knowing that the V8 is less powerful. Everybody said, nah, fuck that, I want the V8. They don't care about they don't care about the fact it's a little less powerful they don't care so you're stuck so now your only option is to upgrade to what you don't want well, how do you know you're being gentrified yeah well it's really simple you just wait and you you just watch and you see boom right there you're being gentrified it's a nissan leaf this is one of the few nissan leafs i've ever actually seen and uh i have this is the newer one so when she pulls in I believe she's supposed to use the Chad Emo uh, charger. She doesn't use CCS. I'm guessing Japan in the revision of the Nissan Leaf. I'm thinking they're probably going to get rid of the uh, um, C they're going to get rid of Chad Emo and they'll probably add CCS because uh, it kind of doesn't make sense to be shipping cars to America that aren't either having Max or CCS charging. So my guess is they're going to have to fix that. But, uh, yes, yeah, Chatty Mo is obsolete. It's extremely obsolete. So, um, you know, my guess is they're going to have to do something about that soon. Yeah, that happened to a lady on Thursday. And she just gave him a call and they got it right back around. Okay, I wish they operate these things. Either that or add a third one. Yeah, <laughs> or a fourth one, a third or fourth. They're getting a lot busier, like everywhere, you know, like. Well, they're selling more cars. Yeah. Oh, so that thing has two different chargers. That's two different ones. Interesting. And of course, you got more Teslas pulling up and everybody at the Tesla chargers are happy. See, that's the reality of the situation. If you're going to have an electric vehicle charger system, you have to have NAX and you basically have to make it so that um, everybody is pretty much using the exact same standard. And it looks like it's going to be NAX. You know, CCS had its time and just like Betamax, it's on its way out in favor of VHS. So, um... You know, the Tesla guys, they have a better system technically all together. You know, it's like you pull in and then you drive straight out head on. It makes more sense, you know. Everybody's basically formed up doing the exact same thing. So, um, you know, she's uh, just calling them and they're going to reboot the thing for her. So after they're finished with that, it's like, um, you know, everything will be okay. Look right here. You got another Lyric in Argent Silver pulling up. Unfortunately, they only got the uh, smaller wheels. They don't, they're not riding them 22s like me. But uh, he's going to have to pull up and he's going to have to pull in behind me. He's going to have to pull in right behind me. Um, I don't know where he's going to park. But uh, my guess is he's planning to charge as soon as I'm finished. So, yeah, it's uh, 12.58. So, um I don't know where these people were earlier, but um, the bottom line is when it comes to these chargers, if you can come really early or you come really late, that's the best possible time. There's usually like nobody here. But if you start doing that middle of the day stuff, it's like it's it's 
iffy. It's like maybe there's somebody, maybe there's not. You know, but uh, yeah, here, here, this guy, he's walking up to me. <laughs> Thank you. Are you almost done? Are you going to be here? I will not probably be here too long. Um, yeah, I saw you. Yeah, I'll be done uh, probably within the next 30 minutes, I think. Yeah. Oh, she's trying to get that one activated right now. So she's on the phone with them. You got the freebie? Oh, yeah. How, that, how and that, that work? That, huh? you're, you're, well, you're finding out how that's working. Everybody got the same exact thing. And unfortunately, we can't use Tesla. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. Well, I got the free one. I, I just did this this for the free one. I got huh? a charger at home. Where'd you buy from? Uh, King O'Rourke. Oh, you yeah. went to King O'Rourke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never go to King O'Rourke. I should, I should Why? What happened? <laughs> They're terrible. Really? I, I, do you have any problems with it at all? No, I, w I got mine from Paul Conti. So far, I've had no. But no... Yeah, but if you got problems, you got problems. Don't matter where you buy it. Yeah, I I, had, I didn't have any issues buying from them, with you know, exception of um, I ordered a Sport Three and it never showed up, so I ended up taking a Luxury Three with the same specs. Except this one had a little bit more. This one had the 19 kilowatt charger. Okay, I ordered the uh, the, the uh, uh, what do you call it? the same one you did on two. A Not Sport Two. Oh, no. the sport, the uh, luxury. No, no, that's the cheap model. Oh, luxury two. I ordered the luxury two, and in the, in uh, my other car died, so I took this off the lot. What was the other car? Uh, it was a Caddy. XT5. No, CT uh, CTS. Really? Oh, it was, it was, it was an older one. Yeah. Yeah. What happened was uh, I pushed it, and the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the timing belt. Uh, jumped and I, I bent the rod and they, they weren't worth any money. Guy says it's not worth fixing. Really? I'm what surprised. Did you, what did this cost you? 76? Closer to 80 because the, the, the twos, I have the two power roof. Two. Oh, you got the, I got the power. I, I basically took every option they had. Plus I have the 19 kilowatt charger. I don't know what that is. Uh, what it basically, do you have a home charging? Yeah. Um, if you have a 50 amp fuse or a 100 amp fuse, you could charge yeah. faster at home. Did they activate it? Oh shit! What? So they weren't able to activate it. Oh my goodness! So you're coming over here? I'm I'm on what? That's chat. She uses chat and mall. I don't know what you're talking about. The the type I use CC. We use CCS. She uses that blue one. Chat and mall. Would that fit in our? No. Okay, no. I was gonna say because I don't understand any of that. I do it at home, but I. I figured, let me see what this is all about in case I take it. Did you have to do anything? What? Well, what do you mean? Uh, just go on the app, or did you have to do anything? I doubt. I, I signed up for auto charge on the app, so basically, as soon as you... What? You didn't get it free? No, 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 no. I have free. It's just that the way the system works, uh, if you want to be able to simply plug in and start charging, you have to go on the app, and you have to um, enroll in auto charge. Did you do that? I don't know. Maybe. Is this the first time you've been here? Yeah. Well, I was here a couple of weeks ago. I live in Smithtown. I'm oh. only going to American Burger. I did this a uh, few weeks ago, and uh, the one guy was sitting here with the, nobody in the car charging. Yeah, I know. And somebody was here, and there was a person ahead of me. I said, fuck it, we'll just go at home. And that might, might be what I'm doing now. I don't know what she's doing. I think she's going to try to um, plug in at the same time. It might work. It might not. I'm not really sure. Um, but the thing about it is usually the way it works is you have to use the app in order to tell it what to do. So basically when I pull in, all I got to do is I tell the app, um, yeah, I need to use that. I thought she didn't have to do anything. What? I thought you didn't have, what is this? This, I don't have this. What do you mean? This little plug. The flap? Yeah, I don't you have that. You should have that. The plug, the black plug. You should have that. That yeah, black plug cl covers up the DC fast charger. You're supposed to have that. Maybe I have that and I just don't take it off. The, is, that what, is that what I got? Oh, you know what it is? At home, you don't take it off because you don't have DC fast charging at home. So that you probably have that plug. It's just that you don't you don't ever pull it off. I, yeah, I never do. You don't have to, yeah. I got to take that off to do this one? To do DC fast charging, yeah. Because if you notice, the bottom of the plug has these two large prongs. I, I don't know. I just plug it in at home and that's it. But you, did you download the app? You, I you, think so. 
I got to ask my wife. She's a, I'm, right. I'm not technically. Uh, I'm, All right, let I'm me technically challenge. Let me explain it to you. You got to. I'm not going to remember. <laughs> well, no, it's simple. You got to first of all, you got to download the we, app. I think we got the the, the EV Go. Yes. She's got the EV Go app. And did she use their rebate for the free charging? Supposedly. She did. Supposedly. Okay, because you're going to need that. If now, what do I got to do? Was anything? If you signed up for auto charge like I did, when you plug up, all you have to do is go on the phone and say, I want to use... Oh, you have to do something. Yeah, you, you have to tell it which type of charger you're going to use. Maybe you can help me after you're done. Possibly. Next, uh, is, your, is your thing working? Hopefully she, yeah. Uh... Right, is it working though? You're charging? I guess Did not, and by the way, I heard you tell them that you didn't download that. You really should download that. I understand that. I used to use the app. They're just like, you have EV Go, and then you have Electrify America, and like, you have like five apps on your phone. Like, no. What I, I was telling him the same thing. The reason why you got to download that app is because when you pull up to the charger, you need to tell it what side of the charger you're going to use. Like, just like now, you're using Chatamo, right? Yeah. If you're using that auto charge um, where you basically just plug it in and you start charging, it'll do it. It's just that you have to you have to just click one button. You have to tell it, yeah, I want to use Chatamo. And then as soon as you plug it in the car, it'll start charging right away. You don't have to do anything else. Can you help me when you get out of here? I'll, I'll, I'm next. If yeah, maybe I'll charging. walk over there. In fact, I'll take a look at how you have your app set up. Well, because I, out. Yeah, I, I know. I've been out here. <laughs> I went shopping a minute ago. Okay. Yeah, I, I know. But you're I'm, a, I'm sure you're going to sit in there with the heat on, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come over there real quick. Guys. <sighs> See, this, and this is one of the other things about these public chargers you run into a lot of people who have no idea how to start these cars we, these cars have a hundred kilowatt batteries so for the most part it takes you about an hour and 30 minutes to go from uh, uh zero uh, to here on this thing yeah. <laughs> yeah i gotta be here an hour and a half how long does it take you at home it takes you like seven hours right or at night, about five or six. I don't know. I plug it in the next day. So. Yeah, these, these cars. Uh, you. Six foot six. Actually, these, yeah, you're kind of big. Yeah. These, these cars have larger batteries than her car. Her car will take like maybe uh, 30, 40 minutes to charge. Our cars take like an hour. Oh, you have a 450, so, so you have the, the rear wheel one. drive. You got the rear wheel drive. Right. Yeah. It's not the one I ordered, but. Oh. It's on that side. Oh, okay. Hi. He's going to help you. Hi. <laughs> Baby How are you? So he was telling me that you downloaded the EVGO app, and um, I was asking him if you, you, you did the redemption for the free charging. Because you, 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 if you sign in, okay, that's the Cadillac app. Did you download the EVGO app? You have to download the EVGO app. You may have to go on the App Store for it. No, you no. To do this, you have to use the. This is an EV Go fast charger. You have to use the EV Go app. You have to download it. Go on your app store, and you can download the EV Go app. Oh yeah, sure, no problem. So they have a 450e, which is like the uh, rear wheel drive version of my car. So um, basically, I'm helping them get set up for the first time. So far, so good. They're probably going to end up using the Seinfeld charger too, if, unless we can get the Baldwin on back and running. So we'll take a look and we'll see what we can do. If I, other than that, he'd have to uh, pay to charge, but he may have to have his dealer help set up the app. And look, we got we got Keisha over here charging the Tesla Model Three. Congratulations on your lovely Tesla with the white seat. Everybody got white seats. I had to get the white seats. I had to get the white seats. You comfortable with the app? Okay, I wouldn't be able to do it without it. Okay, so yeah, Thank you, it looks like everything's good. So just remember, put your black cap on and uh, put the thing back in the thing, and just yeah, just make sure you just put the cap back on. I got you. Okay. Huh? All right, so nice seeing you. Nice so you, see you nice see you. if you want to look at it, just look at it real quick, and so yeah, just look at it real real quick. Yeah, I am going to, would you? Okay, because I'm gonna pull out for this guy. Yeah, so basically, yeah, I just want to take a quick look. I just want to take a quick, couple quick pictures. Yeah, I'm going to let this guy get in there. 
let this guy get in there. Yeah, so, yeah. Right here, um, it's, I gotta turn the car on. Uh, yeah, sure, no problem. You know, we got similar cars. Yeah. Yeah, so let me just show you. You'll see. Oh, it's fucking cold. I yeah, no. Me, me. <laughs> Everybody's telling me that. Okay, you see this where it says ambient lighting right here? No, right here it says on go. What is it? Uh, accent. Uh, let's see. Okay. I mean. Yeah. Just, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Just. Um, yeah. Just put the cap in, and then the um, door will slide up. And all right. All right, so we're good. Yeah, that's it. Huh? Thank you again. Welcome. Yeah, let me pull out for this guy. Wait a minute, did that guy leave? Oh, there he is. He's behind me. They're talking, they keep talking about they want to go to American Burger. Okay, so there we go. Once again, another helpful helpful uh day thanks to me the car sale the impromptu car salesman i'm letting this guy with this bolt get in there and uh i am fully charged all the way up i'm good yeah i just i don't know if it's true enough i i met a guy in dunkin donuts who said he used to work for king o'rourke as a salesman young kid and he told me that noise that you hear, that you woo, 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 woo. That's, that's by government. They make it so you have to have that because if you don't have that, blind people won't know you're there. Yeah, but it's the only car that has it is the electric car that I never heard another. Anyway, he told me. And the hybrids. He told me that GM paid NASA uh, for that sound because it's the sound that uh, the sun makes when it, uh, when it comes up. Oh, yeah? That's what he said. No? Really? <laughs> that's what he said. I never heard another car make a sound, electric car. If you stand near any of these Toyota uh, hybrids or if you get near any of these Teslas, too, they all make some sound they? because they... Listen to this one. Listen. Listen as this guy comes up. Listen. I didn't hear nothing. No. That's weird. I didn't hear nothing. Oh, you didn't hear nothing No, I, that's actually weird. I couldn't hear him either. I figured maybe I'm deaf. But most of these cars have to make a sound. Otherwise, blind people won't know you're coming. Do you buy that... Uh that's the sun coming up, so no noise. It's a possibility because the sun does make noise per se, but then there's no noise in space. But anything that releases energy makes noise. So yeah, I kind of buy it. <laughs> they pay pay to have that particular sound. They needed something special. Okay. Yeah. Right, thanks again, man. All right, take care. All right, so he's going off to get himself some coffee. I got my charge. I got this guy right here with the bolt. He's charging, and I am pretty much done. So I did want to go to the store. It's 2.02. I want to grab some lunch. So fortunately, I was able to call the, uh, what is those people? I was able to call the um, EVgo uh, customer service, and they were able to activate... This car charger right here. They were able to activate Baldwin. Because I knew there's usually nothing wrong with Baldwin. There's usually nothing wrong with it. It's just that uh, every now and then, if a charger deactivates, you pretty much have to uh, call them and they can just reactivate it. It took me like three minutes. And um, I'm glad I did that because that was actually a little bit of a learning process. Because um, normally when I come here, I don't have a problem with the charger's not working. So... Look at his G wagon. Oh, this is this guy's G wagon. Oh, my question is, how much money did you launder, sir? Guys, laundering money. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I say about all these uh, Bitcoin people and these Russians. These you Russians, Ukrainians, they have to launder money through the uh, cryptocurrency. But anyway, that's besides the point. So yeah, I got a little bit done. But understands that that's the reason why I love making these videos. These videos are like a vlog for my first. God damn, they got some big ass holes in this fucking ground. So anyway, look at these holes. So anyway, um, yeah, look at this shit. Look, they're trying to crack my 22s. Look at this shit. So, uh, yeah, um, as I was saying, uh, let me just plug this in. Uh, yeah, um, I got a lot done today, you know, taught these people how to use the app and everything, 
And uh, that was uh, interesting. You know, you got to do a good deed every now and then, you know. I don't do enough of them. So I just got a couple done for the month. But, uh, yeah, um, understand something. With that Dodge Charger EV, this is exactly what you're going to be looking at. You're going to be at a charging station. Somebody's going to pull up. Somebody's not going to know how to charge, and they're going to ask for help. It's like every single time I'm at that charger, somebody pulls up. They have no idea what they're doing, and they're asking you for help. You know? And uh, I usually help them. Not wrong with that, right? So either you're going to have somebody who has absolutely no idea what to do, or you're going to have somebody who, uh, you know, for whatever reason just needs the help. Either that or they're going to grill you, and they're going to be like, yo, when are you going to be finished? Because I need to charge. And they expect you to move right away for them. Everybody gets uh, testy and impatient. So I do understand some people's concern when they talk about the fact that, uh, you know, there's not enough EV chargers. And um, I do understand people's uh, apprehension with the electric vehicle. I do totally understand it. But um, unless you want to settle for a shitty four-cylinder or a crappy fucking six-cylinder with stupid twin turbo hair dryers on it, all I can say is you really ain't got much of a choice. And uh, that's it. I mean, yeah, there's some people, oh, yeah, I'm going to keep my charger forever. I got a health care. I'm going to keep it forever. Okay, go ahead. So that means that you're going to continue to pay top dollar for premium unleaded. And when your rotors start to go and your pads start to go, you're going to be paying, what, $2,500 just to uh, change your brakes. But you got the money, so you ain't worried about it, right? But that's that's the reality of the situation. You're going to be paying top freaking dollar to maintain that damn thing. That's one of the things I realized early on with that car. I was like, wait a minute. You got these 15 and a half inch rotors. You're charging $950 a rotor. You're charging, uh, what, damn near $450 for a set of pads. These cars, in order to keep showing my ass, I have to have the the biggest, fattest tires on the car. The biggest, widest, fattest tires, especially if you buy that wide body. So wait, what you're telling me is I got to pay $400 per tire. You know, I know people with these scat packs and, uh, you know, they do a lot of driving and they're constantly damaging their tires and they end up having to spend a lot of money on tires but even when i had that chrysler 300 i was going through tires real quick because it was like i was always always driving that car and it was just wearing my tires like it was wearing those tires out so um yeah i mean listen if you got the money but the reality you know what the problem ultimately is most people don't have enough money to maintain two cars Especially if you're single, which most people right now are. Usually what ends up happening is one person gets a car and then they try to get the other person in the relationship to get a car if they don't have one already. So, you know, in some cases you might have a dude who might have a Hellcat, but the other car, he convinces his wife to get a Dodge Durango SRT. Or he convinces his wife to get a Jeep uh, track hawk, or he convinces his wife to get, to, and even she's not happy with that because she's like, "Wait a minute, why the fuck am I paying like over a thousand dollars a month for this car?" So you know, you're gonna have to end up having a second car. Chances are, but I think what the problem a lot of people are gonna face is a lot of people don't want to have a second car. They really don't, because if you have a second car, you're gonna have to keep insurance on it. So your insurance for that car is gonna be high. No matter what the second car is, the insurance on that is most likely going to be a little high, too. So a lot of people, you know, a lot of people may or may not be able to, uh, you know, spend that kind of money on the regular. So I, I think some people are disappointed with the fact that now they're realizing that their old car is technically better than the new car. Because at first, I, I don't give a fuck. If they had that twin turbo hurricane putting out 800 horsepower, I don't want it. I just don't want it because I already know that it's inferior to the Hemi V8. I know it's inferior. So the reality is your old scat is better than that motherfucking twin turbo bullshit V6 hairdryer shit. Everybody knows it. Nobody wants that shit. Nobody wants it. Everybody knows that that, that Hemi is better. 
Everybody knows it. Everybody knows, especially for tuning purposes, that the Hellcat's better. Everybody knows it. It's like, how are you going to tell me that this car got 797 horsepower and you're going to tell me that you're putting out some bullshit little twin-turbo V6 hairdryer car and you're going to try to convince me? How are you going to try to convince me that that's better than what I got? You can't. You can't. You absolutely can't. Uh oh, this lady, she, she's uh, emptying out her cart, but she forgot about the cakes. She's got the cakes in the car. You got to get the cakes out the cart, lady. Get those cakes. Okay, where are we going? Yeah, I mean, it's a damn shame, but it is what it is. See, I, I, knew, I knew this was coming. When they got rid of SRT and they started selling these scat packs, like, I thought that was the stupidest fucking name in the world. It's like when I saw them selling that shit, I was like, I don't want that. I don't want none of that. I never wanted a Dodge product. I always wanted a Chrysler Hellcat, and they're not going to ever build it. So that means that I'm stuck not buying uh, another Mopar. I'm not doing it. Like, I, 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 I don't even like the new Jeep product. I think it looks terrible. Honestly, the new Jeep, uh, what is it, the WL models, I hate those. Ugh. The wheels look stupid. There's too much wheel gap. It's like, I don't like them. The interior is nice. I'll give them that. But the exterior, nah, man. They can keep that shit. I don't even want that. So I'll, I'll keep my Jeep SRT till the wheels fall off. I'll keep my Jeep SRT. You know, till the wheels fall off. And then I'll just buy new wheels. You know, but uh, nah, man. It's like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna sucker me into buying this fucking inferior bullshit. You're not gonna sucker me. It's like, I've been with the product long enough to know when you're doing a bait and switch. You're not doing no bait and switch on me. You got the wrong one, son. You got the wrong one. Look at these people's car. These people got like some twin turbo V6 engine probably. It's like, no thanks. I don't want that. I don't want it. Let's get kind of like making a vlog about uh, electric vehicles. You know. <sighs> yeah, but that's a, that's just what it is, man. I, I have to say, I really am anxious for them to put the Dodge EV out. I'm anxious to drive it. I'm anxious to see how many people actually do go out and buy one. I mean, first of all, considering how bad this economy is, I'm anxious to see who can actually afford to go out and buy one, actually. But, um, you know, I, I really don't believe that that Chrysler airflow concept is ever going to really happen. I don't believe it. It certainly isn't going to look like it does. And I, I, think I'm, I think at this point, I think I'm done with Chrysler. I think I'm done. I, I've gone through like six cars with them. I'm done. I'm done. So, um, you know, Cadillac, Mercedes, yeah, we can do business. Because you know what I like. But uh, fucking <laughs> nah, Mopar, I, th I think it's over. I think it's over. I think they're on their last legs. It's funny. Everything is so pretentious about that car. It's like you have this, in this fake engine noise. Why? The car doesn't have an engine, so why do you have an engine noise? You got a pistol grip shifter. Why? These electric cars do need a gear select, but it usually should be electronic because the car can drive itself and park itself and all that. There's no reason to have that pistol grip shifter unless it's, um, what is it? Unless it's a monostatic shifter. If it, th This shifter right here is monostatic. When you touch it, it goes back to its original position by itself it just springs back right but if you're in a current durango or you're in a current jeep grand cherokee i think most of them have that knob now but if you're in like a 2016 2017 what it is is they changed from the monostatic shifter to the polystable shifter now you may remember on star trek that guy anton yelchin who was playing Chekhov, he got killed by his jeep because for some reason this guy decided that he was going to get out with the jeep in neutral and uh the jeep rolled on him and it 
pinned him against a gate, killed him. So, um, they changed the monostatic shifter to what they call polystable. And the polystable shifter uh, is the one that, you know, you click it, it has detents, and it locks every single time you move it to a new detent. So, um, I don't know if that pistol grip shifter in the Charger EV is going to be monostable or poly or mono monostatic or polystable. I'm not sure which one it's going to be, but we shall see. So, yes, as you can see, I'm going to go to Walmart. They really should have electric vehicle chargers here, considering how many people they got here who are going to take at least an hour in the store. They really should have those things here, but they don't. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to Walmart. going to do just a little bit of shopping for the week and uh, call it a day. To be continued.